Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist, who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's Chemist are the most cost-effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe, maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. Today my guest is Dr Peter Koshland, who's a pharmacist from Koshland Farm in uh, San Francisco in California in the US. Thank you for joining us today, Peter. Yeah, thanks for great, great to be here. It's, it's just a pleasure to talk to you. And we've got here your uh, website. If you would just like to tell people how they can find that website, that would be good. Oh, yeah, it's just koshlandfarm.com. It's uh, K O S H L A N D P H A R M.com. And there's a nice video there that people can click which uh, I found really interesting while I was waiting for you. Okay, so tell people, you know, um, how long you've been in pharmacy and your background. I don't feel that old, but I've actually been in pharmacy for over 20 years and in in compounding and and kind of functional medicine, working with LDN probably for about 15. So it's it's been a while, it still feels new. So um, I don't, feel like it's uh, it's gotten stale at all uh, and it's kind of one of the things I love about these types of therapies w- is that there's just new and exciting developments happening all the time and as I'm sure you're well aware of as somebody who's kind of a, a real leader in this this field and compiling research there's just an enormous amount of new research coming out all the time and we're seeing this therapy expand uh, into new practice areas and new doctors are discovering it so um yeah, it's still exciting, even 15 years in, so. Mm-hmm. And what forms do you um, compound LDN into? Well, you know, whatever people want. I mean, obviously we want to try to be as evidence-based as possible, you know, looking at the research and recommending. We do a lot of consultations with doctors and I will say, particularly with LDN, we spend a lot of time trying to put it on people's radar. Um, I always say, you know, when I talk to doctors, you know, it's the best therapy no one knows about. Um, and so I really feel uh, compelled to discuss this with doctors when, when we have the opportunity to see if they're aware of it. And if they are, how, how aware are they with different prescribing uh, processes, how to evaluate patients, et cetera. So you know, we're still recommending oral therapy you know, for, for most autoimmune diseases, uh, et cetera. But uh, we're seeing lots of interest and uptake now in topical therapy with naltrexone, which is really interesting. I mean, I think the biggest group of doctors we're working with that are kind of really interested in this and adopting it are dermatologists, which is something that's kind of come on the radar in the last couple of years. So we make topical, oral, I mean, some people want to even try some sublingual dosage forms, uh, but we want to make sure that we give people dosages that work. And a lot of that has to do with correct dosing, I think, for patients. Mm-hmm. That's the big challenge. So, do you do sterile and non-sterile? We do, our, our pharmacy does both. We don't do any sterile uh, naltrexone. That's something that we still are only doing in, in the non-sterile facility. Um, but we do sterile compounding, and I always say, and if you watch some of my videos, I talk about this a bit. Especially, I have one that's about a six-minute video on quality assurance. Sterile keeps you at a very, very honest. You have to do everything in sterile very, very carefully. And uh, if you're doing sterile, it kind of creates that atmosphere in your pharmacy where compliance is really, really high across the board. And in a pharmacy like ours in California, it also means you're going to see the state board inspector once a year like clockwork, and they're going to come over and hold you accountable. So uh, even though we don't do 
naltrexone sterile, just the fact that we have a sterile facility and that we're thinking in those terms, I think kind of creates a culture across the whole pharmacy about just quality assurance, compliance, making sure everything's done at the very, very highest level um, to make sure that, you know, we get good patient outcomes. I mean, that's really what it's all about. And quality assurance is a big part of that. I always say quality and communication are the two keys to great outcomes. When we have a communication with the patient and the, and the doctor, and then couple that with a great, great high quality compound, great things happen for our patients. Mm -hmm. I was only asking uh, about the sterile aspect because um, there are pharmacies out there that are uh, compounding eye drops, mm. um, naltrexone eye drops or LDN. Yeah. eye drops for dry eye, Sjogren's syndrome, you know, that kind of thing that seemed to be working quite well. So I'm is very aware of the therapy. Yeah, it's really exciting. And again, it's kind of speaks to what I mentioned earlier is that naltrexone continues to show up in new ways as a, as a potential therapy and be really effective. I mean, and I think that what you just mentioned is something we're very interested in and are going to look into bringing in maybe in the new year as, as an offering because we're just, we're hearing of really great uh, outcomes with, with the eye drops. So, yeah. yeah. Well, if you could explain to those patients out there who are thinking, why would I want to go to a pharmacy that was non-sterile? You know, myself, I didn't, I was thinking, how, you know, the compliance that uh, pharmacies have to go through how can they go through everything that they have to go through and be non-sterile? So if you could just explain to people out there who probably have got no idea what that actually means, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and sterile, it's, 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 if anyone out there has an opportunity to, to watch some of our videos, we actually kind of do a walkthrough and show some of the, I will say it's like a pharmacy inside the pharmacy. It's a, you know, and sterile products are ones that are eye drops uh injectable or inhalation therapies primarily and so they, they have to be bacteria free basically because we would risk causing great harm uh that risk obviously with oral therapies you don't want contaminants but the 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 bar is not so high for those in terms of like antimicrobial levels etc so uh that's kind of the what's special about the sterile therapies yeah i mean we should be thinking in those terms for everything we do in terms of the high compliance but when it comes to sterile, there's just an extra level of, of the facility, the, the maintenance, the testing, everything just is just much, much more rigorous because the risks are higher. So that's, you know, that's just part of the aspect of that. And it's a necessary aspect to keep patients safe. But when you say non-sterile, it doesn't mean to say that your facility is allowed to be dirty no. or anything, you know? <laughs> no, and, and it, it's, it's an important point because I think you can think, well, it's, you know, it's non-sterile, so, you know, it, I don't have to worry about that. And that's not exactly true. And actually, a big part of what we try to educate patients and doctors, for that matter, is, is how important it is to really get to know your compounding pharmacy that you work with and evaluate their quality assurance. And there isn't a real, there are standards out there, but not everyone complies with them, to be perfectly honest. And so we really want people to hold their pharmacies accountable to putting out a really high quality product. And we actually have a document on our website that kind of goes through like three key questions to ask. You know, and one of them is, you know, how often do you test your finished products? And for us, that's a huge part of our, our quality assurance process is to take like, for example, our low-dose naltrexone products, and it's got to be 3.5 milligrams. We want to make sure it's actually you know, 3.5 milligrams inside the capsule. And there's no way to really evaluate that unless you invest in a process where you're constantly testing your finished products across dosage forms, across personnel, um, you know, across uh, different uh, types of therapies, different active ingredients, et cetera. So, so there's lots of, there's ways to do that, but it does take a little bit of just kind of sniffing around a little bit with the pharmacy. And, and um, we want, you know, especially with something like naltrexone, I mean, there's a big difference for some patients between 3.5 and 4 milligrams in terms of their therapeutic outcome. So that difference, you know, we want to make sure that there isn't, you know, 
something that's being done sloppily or that the, the quality of the chemicals that are being used are going to you know create a situation where maybe one month it works and the next month it doesn't we want it we want it to work continually forever and uh, you know that's part of that evaluation is to make sure that the pharmacy is going to be able to do that mm -hmm. the patient outcomes what would you say your your feedback from your patients has been for, for naltrexone, it's just remarkable. I mean, there, there aren't that many therapies you get in medicine in general. <laughs> uh, there aren't that many therapies you come across where you have that jaw dropping moment where a patient really responds in a way that's just life changing. And I think that's really true with naltrexone. And, uh, you know, you know, your, you know, your history with MS. And I think I've seen that in many MS patients having just tried and failed lots of different therapies, have lots of uh, kind of severe kind of acute uh, symptoms, but also kind of a fear that the, the chronic trajectory of their illness is not good and that they're getting messaging from their doctor that this is kind of just the way it is. And we put them on this very basic, you know, therapy, you know, in all, in all intents and purposes relative to some of the very sophisticated therapies that are out there. And all of a sudden, you know, their disease goes into remission. And it is like people getting their lives back. Not only do they feel better, but they, they feel like their, the, the disease process now is not going to jeopardize their future. And um, it's, it's, very, it's very powerful. So it's, it's, it's really exciting to be part of that and to try to help spread the word about it, you know, at least in our community, so that people are aware that this, this option is out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been taking LDN now for 17 years. It was my anniversary on the 3rd of December. And the number of compounding pharmacies back then in 2003 was nothing like it is today. I mean, you must know going back 15 years, I believe you said, in those days, the standard here in the UK was three milligrams for the first month and then 4.5 thereafter. Um, but the dropout rate was high, you know, 3.5 milligrams was going to be too high for some people to start with, to finish with. They were never going to get on 3.5. But so many people have read so much about LDN and still think that 4.5 is the goal. And if they're doing really well on two milligrams, you know, they've failed in their opinion because they can't get to 4.5. But, you know, every time they put it up, they don't feel as well. But it's what those suits you best. You know, if two milligrams works for you, don't worry about it. You know, that is your that is your dose. Um, and as a pharmacist, what do you these days have as a starting dose for patients? Yeah, I mean, that point you bring up is really important. And I think it's it's a big development, I think, that's happened in the last few years. It's, and for us, it's a, it's a big, even for practitioners who are experienced with LDN, we're really trying to get the message that you just described out, which is 4.5 was kind of developed, I think in some ways arbitrarily. I mean, it does work for a lot of patients. And I would say for our patients, a majority are on 4.5, but that's not the majority of all patients. I'd say, you know, people are on a range from 0.5 to six, I would say somewhere in that range. And again, it is, I mean, when I think about how LDN works, it makes a lot of sense that it would be very individualized because we're trying to enhance this uh, endorphin release with the minimal amount of opiate receptor blockade. And for every person that's gonna be uh, a different dose for, for that matter. So we, you know, it, it creates some interesting challenges. It's interesting that, you know, one of the things, I, I just did a training with some dermatologists actually uh, a few weeks ago. And one of the doctors on that training was very experienced with LDN and she was trying to teach her residents at this hospital uh, about it. And she was saying that one of the biggest challenges that the residents were having was this idea that every patient's gonna have their own individualized dose and that you can't just give everybody 4.5 if you want them to respond. And the, for me, working in compounding, especially, and a lot of other functional type uh, 
medicine modalities, like that's kind of the cornerstone of what we do. It's a very individual life. It's very patient specific. But when we get outside of our bubble into the mainstream medical world, it's still kind of everyone thinks, okay, what's the dose? How do I give it? How, you know, how do I monitor? And um, yeah, going back 15 years, it was like, get everybody to 4.5 as quick as you can, keep them on it for four to six months. If they don't respond, then, you know, sorry, you failed. And that, that really, I think, is not the right approach. We do, we do get, get a lot of people to 4.5, but we want to titrate them up slowly, especially if they don't respond at that higher dose. And what we're typically recommending is that they retitrate at very low doses. We recommend starting at 0.5 milligrams and kind of going up by 0.5 until they get uh, you know, a response, which is also interesting because we also have to educate our patients to monitor their own health and their own feeling and sense and that's also an interesting challenge sometimes because patients aren't usually asked to do that. It, it kind of goes both ways. A doctor is used to giving you this drug and saying, here's your 10 milligrams of Ambien and you're going to go to sleep and they go, great. And that's end of conversation versus saying, I'm going to give you this regimen that's going to titrate up and I want you to tell, you know, monitor whether you're feeling better. And if you start to feel worse at the next titration, go back. And so that's interesting too. But at the end of the day, we want to use what works, and that's what really works. And we're dealing with, again, very serious medical conditions, and patients are desperate for, for solutions. And so we, you know, they're willing to do it, but we do have to have that co component to educating the doctors and patients about, about this idea that, yeah, so for two milli if two milligrams works, then that's, that's it. That's your special dose. That's what your body <laughs> says is the right one. And so... That's a very important development. And what's, what's encouraging about that also is I think we're just seeing a lot more people respond to LDN than we ever did. You know, 15 years ago, I didn't have a, you know, just anecdotally, I would say probably 50 or 60% of people responded. I would say now that we're being more sophisticated about our dosing, I'm seeing more like 80 to 90% of people respond, which is, which is very significant. So mm -hmm. that's an important development for the therapy, I think. You were talking about... <clears throat> working with dermatologists, are they using LDN topically or are they using it orally or both? How are, how are they treating patients? Yeah, I think they're using both actually, which is really interesting. And there's a lot of interesting research coming out on topical naltrexone in general with, with wound healing and pain and, and itching, things like that. But also, I mean, dermatologists are dealing with a lot of uh, autoimmune type conditions like psoriasis. So it, again, kind of like other autoimmune conditions like MS and things like that, there just aren't a lot of great options. And, and the ones that we have don't have 100% efficacy by any stretch of the imagination. So being able to have something that's as safe as LDN that we can try that oftentimes works as well, if not better than some of these other more sophisticated therapies is just something that I think doctors are really happy to learn about. So yeah, they're doing both. They're, you know, they want to find things that work. So you mentioned psoriasis there. What about eczema? Do you mm -hmm. know if they're using it for eczema? Yeah, I think they are, especially topically. I would say it's, I, I'm seeing more uh, naltrexone used topically for things like eczema and more uh, orally for things that are confirmed autoimmune type diagnoses. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. I, I mean, I think Kind of again going back 15 years i think we were only recommending it for people with ms and crohn's disease because that's where the research was when and now we know that gosh it's used for thousands of things in many many conditions that don't even have a confirmed autoimmune component as far as we know so i, I see a role for it even in things like eczema going mm -hmm. forward um, and in the dermatology world is really starting to kind of get familiar with it so i think there's a lot of new things we're going to see in terms of people's use and, and what's good, what they're going to be successful with. So, well, I know it's worked uh, very well for people with Haley Haley's disease mm -hmm. and Betchett's syndrome as well. Um, and these people, along with the people with psoriasis, I mean, acute psoriasis is, it really impacts your whole quality of life. I mean, it, it, it's awful, but it does seem to work really really well um, most of the people that I know take it orally so and um, but I have spoken 
to some pharmacists and doctors who have used it topically or have used both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So with it, like you say, we're still learning. There's, there's so much yeah. more to learn, I'm sure. There's so much more. I really appreciate all the work you've done too to help compile the research as it comes out. I definitely refer to your website frequently and try to see what's what's new and what's being published as well as just doing PubMed, PubMed reviews and things like that. But uh, it is exciting that, that there's just still so much potential for this therapy and, and the excitement of doctors finding a real solution for their patients that we can mm -hmm. offer them is, is re really rewarding as a practitioner. So anybody listening to this, do you just ship within San Francisco, California, or do you go beyond? We ship uh, within California. So we're just within our state. In, in the United States, you kind of have to be state-minded. <laughs> you can ship to other states, but you have to be licensed in each individual state here. So we're, we're just a license in California and we're really kind of committed to being kind of the resource for the state of California uh, for these therapies and try to, trying to help educate doctors. But that being said, I'm, you know, we're, we, we want to spread the word about this wherever we can. So we, we talk to other pharmacies and doctors throughout the country uh, just to, you know, make sure they have the resources they need, you know, to be able to try to, you know, try this therapy in, in patients and feel confident that it's appropriate and safe for them. And at the end of the day, it's all about helping patients, isn't it? 100%. <laughs> yes, that's, that's amazing. So yeah. we'll just go back to your website here. And uh, as you say, you, you gave the website address there and you've got lists here for patients, all about uh, what the the links they can click for doctors and then they can find out about you and your management team. There yes. you all are. Yeah. And on the doctor's page, we have a, a link for some prescriber webinars. Uh, and I've done a couple on low dose naltrexone. In fact, one specifically okay. on this dosing idea of ideal dosing. Uh, you're trying to get away from the 4.5. Uh, shoot us an email and we'll send you a password to access those um, those webinars, okay. um, if you're interested. So uh, we talk a little, there's one about uh, topical naltrexone and one about dosing oral naltrexone. So mm -hmm. if people are interested, that's available. And there is your, all your details there, your address, phone, fax, email, your opening hours. Um, life is <laughs> not that it was pre-COVID. Um, where people probably would come and see you more. I just think you're getting more phone calls, aren't you, to discuss things? Yeah, it's we don't see as many people as we used to. And we actually still aren't letting people into the pharmacy. So all of our transactions are happening in the lobby and at the door, unfortunately. But uh, we're trying to keep ourselves safe and uh, be able to continue to do what we do. So hopefully we'll be able to reopen soon enough. But uh, yeah, we're still kind of in that uh, hunker down mode. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for having been our guest today and sharing your experience with us. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist, who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's Chemist are the most cost-effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.